Well, Dad, I have to admit, you certainly turned things around. Congratulations. Coming from you, that means a great deal, sir. Thank you so much. I am Jeffrey Giuliano. This is my boy, Eden. I don't go anywhere without him. You know, a year and something ago, we were trapped off in India. No work, no money. He couldn't come to America because he'd left his American passport locked up here in Bangkok. And I couldn't come to Bangkok uh, because of COVID, everything was locked down. So we were going from pillar to post, from ashram to ashram, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Yeah, and India just trying to survive. I think we wore the same clothes pretty much for six months. When he got home, remember how your jeans just rotted off? We had to throw them away. <laughs> they, yeah. They disintegrated. So, uh, however, things have changed a lot, man. You know, I got a call to do a movie for Netflix called Peninsula Train to Busan. It was a great part. Uh, not too much of a stretch for me, playing a, a thug, which I've done in 28 movies. But it was special, you know. A zombie movie, I had nothing to do with that. I was the guy at the beginning that gave everybody their marching orders. But terrific cast, all-star cast in Korea, and a lovely shoot. And I was very happy with that. I came home, great, thought, well, I went to Korea. I've been all around the world making movies, Malaysia, India, of course, America, Hollywood, wherever, London, uh, did one in Milan once. So, you know, this is what an actor does. It's a gypsy life, isn't it? We've been to yeah. a lot of countries together. So uh, I didn't think too much about it, but it was a hit. Peninsula was a big deal. It came out and it was seen, apparently. Well, they were casting for a movie that I knew nothing about called Squid Game. And the director saw me in Peninsula, as it happens with actors. And apparently now, I don't know, but I was told they just couldn't find anyone in Korea to play the head VIP guy in this film, the main foreigner in the whole series of Squid Game, me, um, ultimately. And so they asked me to make a tape on my phone. I did that, sent it to them. They said yes, then they said no, then they said yes, then uh, my people had to talk to their people and the negotiations kind of broke down or schedule changes or whatever. It just didn't happen. And they said, look, sorry, but we really like your work next time. I said, sure, because I don't invest myself too much uh, emotionally in acting it because it's a heartbreaking affair when it doesn't click over the way you want it to, which is almost all the time for everybody. Ask Morgan Freeman. Didn't get a great job until he was in his mid-50s. Anyway, I'm a little older than that. So they called back and they said, well, you know, Jeff, come on over. So signed a contract, got on a plane and had to spend two weeks in quarantine in Korea, which is always a lot of fun. When I got there, I was informed that I had to do a nude scene. Now I'm over 60, not in the best of shape. Mentally, oh, an iron trap. Physically, yeah, I spend a lot of time at a computer monitor. So I wasn't real keen on that, but they reminded me that it was in the fine print of the contract in the actor's directions of the script, which I didn't look at. So I got there thinking I was just going to breeze through this thing, and actually I did. I, there was quite a breeze you know, now that I think about it. And uh, yeah, it was full frontal in the beginning. That was, I believe, the director's concept that was then negotiated by myself uh, and the very helpful production people in Seoul to just kind of drop the robe and show my butt, uh, which is now all over the internet. I'm happy, and I'm sure you're, my son is proud of that. Uh, not, but yeah, it's everywhere, man. Just Google my ass, and there it is, Jeff's ass, everywhere, forever. But uh, you know what they say, if a nude, a nude scene, if it propels the story forward, and it actually is very germane to the scene that I did with June there. Um, hey, there, there's one thing I'd like to mention that I've been informed of 
that's happening online. Young people are watching this film with their parents, and it's opening up opportunities to talk about their gayness and uh, coming out to their parents. And it's opened a door, a portal for that discussion. So I'm very proud of that, something great. Probably the greatest thing of my participation in Squid Game is just that, and not so much my ass. So I did the same with June. Now everybody's talking about June. He's the, maybe the greatest young actor that's happening right now. Certainly good looking dude. I saw him with his shirt off the other day on the internet. Built, he's got the 12 pack. No, no six pack or eight pack there. Yeah. So he, uh, he was fantastic. Lovely to work with. A generous actor, very present. 30 years old, doesn't mean anything. He was right there in the moment, going toe to toe with the, the old war horse here. So that was terrific. We did that scene. And uh, then we had the human furniture, the girls who were, the, her name was, uh, what was her name? Carla. Carla is a lovely Mexican actress that had a, just starred in a Netflix show, a science fiction gig, and um, a very accomplished actress. But here she was, you know, paying some bills and played the human furniture and so, thus was topless. And uh, they told me, well, you know, put your head back and make yourself comfortable in millimeters, millimeters. No, Jeff, you need to put your head back. Again, maybe inches. And they said, no, Jeff, you read, you know, from the, this is the voice of God coming from nowhere over the speakers. Put your head back. Nestle them between her breasts. So I said, Carla, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. That's what we're here for. So I did it. And that was awkward is the word, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Probably more for her than me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that were the two kind of big memories I have of, of the shoot. And didn't know that, who would know, who could know that it was going to be Beatlemania, you know, the Squid Game thing and explode the way it has. It just came at the right time and whatever the perfect storm for our Squid Game to explode in the way that it has. The purpose of this video today for Eden and I to come before you today is to say thank you to Netflix. Thank you so much for turning our life around. Have they not? They have. Yeah. By the opportunities given, that's three films now. Uh, Peninsula, a film called Kate with Woody Harrelson, which is just out pretty much now, and uh, Squid Game, and a lot more in the future. So let's raise a glass to Netflix and to all the good people in Seoul, Korea, at the production of Squid Game. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and we hope to do it again. We'll drink to that. God bless you guys.